Good morning, everyone. I have another fascinating game. Leela Chass ID448 against Commodore 9.42 on four cores. This was a three minute per game time control with four seconds per move. So let's have a look at this game. And this was provided by forum poster PWA128 on the Leela Chass forums. Uh, more games for commenting. So that's what it's called if you want to comment if you want to post your games there so c4 from lena chess now at g6 g3 bishop g7 so we have the english opening knight c3 d6 d3 knight f6 and now we have the bot for next system which i've been playing myself recently on the sunday blitz uh, sessions so this is absolutely fascinating and uh, up my street personally it's a quite a nice system to play with white, I believe, quite easy to play. You can see the d4 square, but you can expand on the king side. So black castles, knight g e2. The knight deploys here to make sure you can have f4, f5 later. Boss black doesn't have that because black's blocked in the f pawn. c6. So there is a concern for d5, of course. h3 taking away the possibility of pinning which might be useful sometimes to weaken d4 c5 very committal decision structurally this really gives it a lock and key over that d5 square now so we have bishop g5 which provokes h6 so creating a target pawns don't go backwards so the bishop's done its job and just goes to e3 so that's a pretty neat positional maneuver Knight c6, white castles, bishop d7, queen d2 hitting h6, provoking king h7. And now white's ready to play f4. This is a luxury position because black hasn't got the equivalent. So gaining space on the king side. We have knight d4. And now f5, with the king on h7, this is more effective, this f5 here. Queen a5 was played in the game. If we look at g takes, e takes, we can see this bishop's now got the e4 square, and that's important tactically sometimes. Let's have a look at this variation. Bishop takes, bishop takes d4 is good here, because of this situation is actually quite favorable for white. A big edge there on the light squares. Uh, so let's see. Uh, so, and the other way, knight takes, White can actually just play, it seems, White can actually just play rook f2 and allow even the loss of the dark square bishop because, again, the light squares are really quite vulnerable here. White has a small edge. So, in either case, taking that pawn on f5, it leads to an advantage for White. And that's good to know if, if you're playing the Botvinnik system and you have this sort of position. A common trap, by the way, a4 is knight b3. So you don't, you don't want to play a4 in a hurry sometimes with a knight on d4. But this, with the king on h7, this is an ideal thematic move, f5. So we have queen a5. And now g4, just continuing uh, the, pr the pressure and building up space. g5 is played. Another fixed target, really. If we look at this position instead, if black didn't play g5, say a6... Then g5 from white, this position, uh, for example, like this, with queen e1, with the queen going to h4, is very dangerous for black. This scenario, uh, white's even got resources like bishop e7. It ends up being quite favorable uh, for white using the f file. This is just an example. Even if the queen infiltrates, this ends up being a favorable scenario. It's just the playthrough, a fictional playthrough there on a6 so anyway g5 was played and white uh, Leela actually just goes uh, for, for an interesting plan bishop f3 first the idea h4 is coming up but now the king's also got g2 and f2 of course for a, a rook to swing to h1 rook a b8 is played taking the bishop you might ask doesn't really achieve much this this kind of scenario Maybe even white fixes down first the queen side and now can can work on the king side. White has a big edge there, a good clamp on the position. Probably play king g2, rook h1, etc. It's it's a good edge. So anyway, that was ignored. It, was, it wasn't taken. So rook a b8. 
And now guess what here? It's a very, very logical, thematic move. Black's about to sort of open, crack open the queen side, or try and do something with queen side counterplay here. Uh, so what would you play with white in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay, h4, yeah, temporary pawn sack, uh, because this h4 is going to be good for hitting that isolated pawn on h6. Black did take, now king f2 was played, h5, it's already pretty tricky here, so white's simply going to round up this pawn and then target h6 with a treble pressure on h6. Uh, if we look at this, if knight e8, rook h1, rook h8, you can see this is a big edge for white crashing through on h6. Okay, so h5 was played. g5, believe it or not. Uh, so this seemingly gives black, you know, straightens up pawns, because after knight g4 check, leader took on g4, so seemingly straightening up the pawns, but the point is rook h1. And you might think, well, the tactical knight f3 hits the queen and protects h4. But there's there's a longer term downside here. The knight's actually quite fragile. Uh, it can be sort of uprooted. So leader doesn't sort of mind this at all. Queen c1, and there's basically a two move threat here. Queen f1, queen g2, and then taking on g4 will undermine f3. And then also h4 is gonna go. That's basically uh, very difficult for black to handle. This is a very precarious, Outpost station of these three attack uh, these three units of black is they're undeminable basically. Rook h8, queen f1, king g8, queen g2. It's all going to be falling to bits now. Knight d4, queen takes g4. So h4 is next. Queen goes back to d8. Rook takes h4. Rook takes h4. Queen takes h4. And this is already a very very desperate position. Because white is threatening things like f6, and, and even knight d5, you know, could be useful. It, rook h1, this is absolutely massive. This is a dream uh, outcome for any English opening Botvinnik system player. Absolutely dream position to have. So, Komodo on this setup seems to have played in a clueless manner. And now desperately sacks a piece where bishop takes f5. Uh, if it doesn't, it's just it's just a disaster. Say f6, g6, uh, take on d4 with check, and then bishop h6. Now, this is just a total nightmare scenario for black. Uh, that's a total absolute massacre. Uh, if king f8 instead of f6, then f6 from white is is end of game basically. Uh, if knight takes f5 instead of bishop takes, it doesn't really matter. This position is absolutely massive for white. That's good to go into f6. Uh, so if that's taken off, white has a massive advantage there as well. So it's it's pretty doomed, uh, this position right here. Yeah, it seems there was a horizon window or something going on. But anyway, the, the g5 earlier from black has just been totally busted basically so this is just admitting defeat bishop takes f5 it's taken knight takes queen g4 queen c8 knight g3 knight takes queens come off it doesn't matter white's just a, a piece up that's taken to avoid any connected pass pawns there being an issue knight e4 massive knight on e4 king comes in on the light squares potentially B5, this is desperate. The game's adjudicated here after C takes B5 as a win for white. The game could continue, for example, D5. White could even here play knight takes C5, even with D4 allowed because bishop H6 is really strong. This ending is totally lost on bishop takes C5 being exchanged down, for example. The, white, the king's going on the light squares. The rook's going on h7 potentially, etc. It's totally lost. Uh, and yeah, if 
rook c8 here then just 94 of a big advantage so yeah it seemed like an ultra smooth botvinnik system uh so if you're if you're a fan of the botvinnik system like i have been recently this game is an absolute delight to see as a recommended game i i just believe there's so much to learn from these leela chess games especially in in your favorite openings of course so i enjoyed this one i hope you did comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much